Hello everybody and welcome to my Resident Evil Outbreak Nostalgia Discussion video. I've been wanting to make this video for a while, but now that Halloween is right around the corner, I definitely think it's appropriate. Now, Resident Evil Outbreak's File 1 and 2 weren't really as popular as Resident Evil 4, and it kind of stood in the shadow of that game. And I, while I did like Resident Evil 4, I felt it wasn't a traditional Resident Evil game, and in fact, I think it could have gotten away with being called something else entirely, and nobody would have even viewed it as a Resident Evil game, aside from maybe Leon. That was only the, the only thing I can think of that connected Resident Evil to that story and to that game at all. You didn't have zombies, you had less Plagas, and you know, the camera view was over the shoulder. And I did like it, I just don't think it should have been called Resident Evil. And I don't like to be an elitist, but with Resident Evil I definitely am. I am a big fanboy of the old school Resident Evil games. I absolutely loved Resident Evil 1 and 2. I liked Resident Evil 3, not as much as, you know, 1 and 2. But I did like that game. Code Veronica was awesome. And the remakes on GameCube, and now on the Wii, if you haven't played those, and you're a survival horror fan, you are doing yourself a giant disservice. You need to go get those games right now. Because the remake of the first Resident Evil, wow, that that game is just perfect. <laughs> Even by today's standards, the graphics are, are gorgeous in that game. And uh, Resident Evil Zero is actually a pretty good prequel as well, so check those out. But anyway, I digress. Resident Evil Outbreak was very unique because for its time, it was the only Resident Evil game that went online. And pretty much to this day, I believe it's the only survival horror game that does go online. Well, did go online. It was shut down well, roughly two or three years after it released. Now, the first Resident Evil Outbreak came out in 2003, shortly after EverQuest Online Adventures. Now, just to get off subject a little bit, there were a handful of games that I played back then that I really enjoyed. And, you know, you just, you can't replace them. They're gone now, and that's that. And, you know, it sucks when games shut down. But it happens, and it's going to happen to your favorite game right now. Whoever you are, <laughs> your favorite game is going to be shut down, and it sucks. So the games that I did use to play back then were obviously Resident Evil Outbreaks File 1 and 2. I used to play EverQuest Online Adventures, obviously. Champions of Norath 1 and 2, SOCOM 1 and 2, and also Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2, and Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence, which yes, it did go online, and I loved that game. And it was shut down within like a year. Konami shut that down. And it really sucked. And then they brought out, uh, you know, Metal Gear Solid 4, that one online. And then they shut that down. So I don't know if I'm ever going to get another Metal Gear Solid game. You know, uh, well, they got an online one coming out. I don't know if it's out yet, but I really don't care. Because they don't, they don't keep them online long enough. They shut them down uh, rather rapidly. And that's another complaint I have with Monster Hunter. And Monster Hunter is another one, by the way. I know I'm off subject here, but as long as we're going down the nostalgia path, I might as well mention these games. Uh, Monster Hunter was another game that I loved, and that got shut down by Capcom. Capcom is just, you know, they're just known for shutting shit down. Like, they'll bring a game out, and it'll be out for a year or two, and then they're like, done. Next one. And I don't really like that. If you take a look at SOCOM 1 and 2, those games were online for, what, like eight or nine years? Some crazy shit like that for a long time, man. And that's how you do it. You, you keep your games online. Servers are cheap to run. Don't shut them down that fast. That sucks. But anyway, before I get on too much of a rant, I, I'm going to get back to uh, what made Resident Evil Outbreaks File 1 and 2 so awesome. And the boss fights were always fun. The game was always tense. You know, you had special items that you can see right there that you could collect to unlock uh, different skins, different costumes for your characters. All of the characters had their own specific skill set, so it was kind of like an RPG. You know, one character, like this character here, Yoko, she could carry a bunch of items in her backpack, but she was slower than the other characters, and she was relatively weak. And then you had, uh, you know, characters that, like George, he was a doctor. He could, you know, he could shoot people with a gun that would heal them and heal the virus. And another thing I should mention is that you did have a virus meter that you had to keep an eye on, which just served to make it even more of a pain in the ass and more hardcore. Now the virus meter would just continue to go, but you could, if every time you ate an herb it would stop for a little while and then you had like a white pill that was known as the antivirus and that would stop it for, uh, I don't know, like two minutes or something like that. But if you got hurt it went up even more. So one of the things that didn't uh, 
helped the game, was, I think, in terms of sales, is that it was so damn hardcore. Uh, you're talking old school, you know, it was relentless. The zombies could actually chase you through the doors. As you see here, the, the Axeman, I believe he was just known as the Axeman, would chase you. And he was, like I said, just relentless. I can't nail that in your head enough if you didn't play this game how relentless the enemies were they just didn't stop like you could see he's beating the shit out of this guy here but he's just gonna get right back up even if you do manage to knock him down and he's kinda like nemesis he chases you non-stop throughout the level you can't kill him and you just gotta get out and it would man it was a lot of fun because you would just you, you would always get out by the skin of your teeth and I always played on very hard and it was just a blast. If people would get hurt, you could shoulder them and carry them a little bit. You know, they'd, they'd, they'd be on your shoulder and you could limp along. You'd go slower, but, you know, you, you could help to save their ass. There were, like, special objectives that were kind of like quests where you could carry people out to get, you know, extra points and stuff like that to unlock, uh, you know, cutscenes or artwork. Um, I, I don't think you can unlock cutscenes. I know you could unlock artwork and, and, you know, like music tracks, but the biggest thing were the costumes that you wanted to unlock those. And it was just, I mean, it was just a lot of fun. Now, I don't want to make this video too long because I could talk about this game for at least 20 minutes. And I know you guys don't want to sit through that, but I try to keep things short. So there was no headset functionality in the game. And that's another thing I think that didn't help the game. Um, you know, at first I didn't understand why they had that and also I should mention they had a bleed effect every now and then you could you could be caught with a bleed and you would go slow but anyway that was just another one of the things that made it hardcore but yeah um, you didn't have a headset and I didn't like it at first but then I started to understand why they did it it created a sense of isolation where it wasn't you know it wasn't necessarily comfortable knowing that you couldn't readily speak to somebody you know uh, when you're on a headset it's not as creepy when you're talking to people. So they would, instead they had an ad lib system where you could see where he's talking here. You could tell people yes, no, here, go, and stuff like that. And after a while you got good at using that system. You know, at first it was a little awkward, but I think that it drove people away. And, uh, you know, they had Resident Evil Outbreak file number three, and a lot of people don't know that. It was finished and it was ready to go, but it didn't release because file two just didn't live up to the standards that they were looking for so they started to roll out with Resident Evil 5 and 6 and, bleh, and Operation Raccoon shitty um, <laughs> I just you know if you're fans of those games that's cool I guess not my thing but yeah um, Resident Evil Outbreaks file 1 2 and 3 were originally planned to be one game but they decided to split them up to maximize profit and that was a big mistake in my opinion so yeah, Resident Evil Outbreak File 1 and 2. Uh, two of my favorite games on the PlayStation 2 Entertainment System, and I miss them dearly. Hopefully someday we'll get an HD remake, but I wouldn't hold our breath, guys. So that's it for this video. I thank you all for watching, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.